the astronauts to read out the gravitational effect of those planets. Hi, I'm Alicia, and this is NASA Now. Every day, new materials are developed that lead to major advancements in the capabilities of spacecraft and aeronautics. So where do these materials come from, and how do we know what will work and what might fail? We'll talk to an expert who pieces the clues together to find the answer. That's ahead, but first, here's what's happening at NASA Now. 14 NASA Explorer schools from across the country were treated to the thrills and realities of microgravity. Teams of teachers from each school met in Houston with their classroom experiments. They talked with NASA astronaut and educator Dottie Metcalf Limburger and boarded a DC-9 aircraft to conduct those same experiments in microgravity. It was an interesting challenge to kind of see what what uh, astronauts are faced with uh, when, they're, when they're working in space. It was just very interesting, great learning experience. Visit the NES virtual campus to learn more about this and other exciting recognition opportunities for teachers, students, and schools. Conducting world-class research in the vacuum of space presents some unique challenges we don't find here on Earth. Extreme temperatures, radiation, micrometeoroids, these are just some of the problems engineers have to deal with when designing equipment to fly in space. NASA employs a special group of engineers who focus on selecting the best construction materials for building the vehicles and equipment headed to space. Our guest today is one of those scientists. Her name is Alma Stephanie Tapia, and she is a metallurgical and materials engineer from Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. As a materials engineer, I get to really pick the materials that we use on the different spacecraft, or sometimes even the airplanes that the astronauts train and fly in. If you think about it, everything's made out of something. So there has to be a specialist like me who really knows what materials are made out of, how strong they are, how light they are, so that we can pick the best materials. The way that we know if a material is actually safe is by testing it. So the first things that we do is we really have to do something called simulations. So if we think it's gonna get really hot or really cold in space, then we're gonna try to make that happen here on Earth. And when we do those tests, we usually get numbers out of them. We don't just say, oh, we think they did good or they did bad. We say they got this hot or this cold or they were able to perform with this type of strength. One of the ways that I like to explain failure analysis is a little bit like Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes has to solve mysteries, and when something breaks, it's a mystery. And I put those pieces of the puzzle together to figure out what really happened. Was it because somebody used it with too much force? Was it because it was too hot? Or was it really because we used it for longer than we were supposed to? And when I put all of those clues together, and I'm able to solve that mystery, we're able then to keep our astronauts safe and help them be able to keep doing their work and help make our spacecraft keep flying safely. One of the things that you've been learning about in class lately has been thermal protection systems. What's a thermal protection system? It's a design that you've put materials together to protect you from the temperatures outside. When it's cold outside, you might put on a jacket. You've developed a thermal protection system to protect you from those cold temperatures. And so depending on what our space vehicle is going through, we're gonna try to protect it in different ways. When we came back in the Apollo program, the bottom portion of that, that thermal protection system, had to be an ablative material. It had to be a material that could burn away because of the fact that it was coming in so fast, it was getting so hot, and it needed to be able to take that heat and go away as fast as possible. The new design for the new space vehicles that we're gonna do are gonna be similar. They're gonna have to be an ablative material like we used when we went to the moon, but now they're gonna be able to take more heat before they burn away. We're gonna be able to use less of it to make our vehicle lighter. And if we were able to go to the moon with that technology, imagine how far we're gonna be able to go now. Just as our expert explained, thermal protection is vitally important in keeping our astronauts safe in space. 
Here's a cool project where you can experiment with heat and thermal protection. You and your students will be able to create your own model spacecraft and see if it can take the heat. Look for Engineering Design Thermal Protection. You'll find it on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to visit our Facebook page and leave a comment. We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.